Yo, what is going on, homies? It's your boy, Stumped, back for another OPTC video. And in today's video, the maintenance is over, and we now have the ship modification added to the shipyard for those of you guys that have leveled up a ship to level 12. And in today's video, we're going to be breaking down all of the ships, all their buffs, going through the modification guide, and sort of giving you guys an idea of where to spend your materials, if to spend your materials, how much it costs, and these particular buffs. So... To start this off, you need to get your ship to level 12, which costs 20 super cola and about 15,000 cola, regular cola. Now, this is a lot. A lot of players won't have this, but I do want to state a preface at the start of this video that all of this stuff is very end game and is very luxury. During the super boss, we saw 1 trillion damage. So all this extra stuff could help in the future. But it's also just very luxury based. If you're a new player, you're focusing on like what the character does. If you're a mid game player, you might be looking at stuff like just the regular level uh, maxed out ships, like level 10 ships and stuff like supports as well as the character, what they do. But this is very end game stuff. So if you're still early on mid game, you've only been playing the game for a little while and you can't do any of this stuff, don't stress too much because this stuff is very costly. It's very expensive, but we will touch on that in a second. So if we head over to the crew tab, hit the shipyard, it brings up the ship tab, and as you can see, you can see all of your ships that you have in the game. Now, if it says level 10, it means that they can be leveled can be leveled up to level 12. So as you can see, the um, Grudge Dolph will actually be leveled up two more times. You then have the Spadile, you have the Magello, these types of ships. If it says max, these ships don't have modifications yet. They don't have uh, level 12. So these, this video won't apply to them as of yet. But thanks to Captain Pappy, I'll leave his Twitter in the comment section below. The ships that did get upgraded are the Hawkins ship, the Ace ship, the Miguelo, the Blackbird, the Rocketman, the Doflamingo ship, the Thousand Sunny, the Moby Dick, the Albida ship, the Mihawk ship, the Merigo, and the Dinghy. And what they do at level 12 is they do get a buffed ability. So if we go over to the Thousand Sunny, because I do think this is probably the best one for most people to level up if you guys want to level up a ship. So here it is right here. At max level, it is going to increase what it actually does in terms of um, its attack and all of those extra shenanigans. So I've done a video on the ship buffs, but when you do level a ship up to level 12, you can actually add modifications. So for myself, during the Super Boss Kazuna, I leveled up the Blackbird ship, this one right here. And as you can see, I have been working on modifications. Now, with leveling up a ship to level 12, it gives them different buffs. So the, this ship gets 1.4 times HP and a 1.7 times attack boost, as long as you have Strength, Dex, and Quick on the team. And if you only have Strength, Dex, and Quick, you then get an extra 1.1, which is like 1.87, which is like the Shark Superb all the time, which is exceptional. It was why I could do so much damage in Super Boss, and it was very, very good. But if you have a look on the side here, there are a bunch of modifications. So if I click on this one here, you get a modification of reduces 10% damage as long as all your mods are at rank 4 or higher. If you can get your mods to level 5, all of them, It'll also give one extra turn of cooldown on top of the one turn that it already does. So two turns of cooldown for a ship is absolutely insane. It's great for speed farming, so I do want to get this up, and we'll talk about that once we hit the modifications. But other ships, the Hawkins ship at level four will boost the chance of landing on matching slots. One turn of special bind removal, which is very interesting. The A ship gives one turn of cooldown and then removes one turn of despair. The Miguelo has one turn of cooldown and then has one turn of a healing effect converted to damage which is in incredibly powerful. I think that's like the first ship that ever does that, uh, or the first ability that ever does that. That's actually really interesting. I'd, I'd love to I'd love to see that. Um, Blackbird, 10% damage reduction, one turn of cooldown. Rocketman gives one turn of cooldown to Powerhouse, one turn of paralysis removal. The Doflamingo ship gives one turn of cooldown, and then a 1.2 chain multiplier. That's an, I think that's an increase to its... um Increase to its special. I think it changes its special. That's what it does. Uh, the Sunny gives one turn of cool attack down and one turn of bind removal, just passively. Uh, the Moby Dick gives one turn of cooldown, 20% damage reduction when you're under 50% HP. Alveda gives one turn of cooldown to Strikers, 1.3 times HP to Strikers. Um, so that's the increase it gets there. Mihawk Ship gives one turn of cooldown to Slashes, one turn of bind removal. The Merry Go has one turn of despair, one turn of bind. And then the Dinghy has one turn of cooldown and then another turn of cooldown on top of that. So adds two turns of cooldown there as well, which is very interesting. So these... Buffs are very powerful. However, getting the level 5, 555, is very, very expensive and very costly. Now, I'm going to keep modifying this ship while I talk about that for a second because 
every time you hit this modification button, you get one free every single day, by the way. It brings up a row of five that you can then select. So if I click any of these, it will overwrite the effect I already have. So I don't want any of these buffs. They're not as good as the ones I have. And to get level five, you need 121 in the stat of HP, attack, or recovery to hit level five. Anything from 90 to 120 is uh, level four. And then under that is level three. So ideally here, we're going for uh, level fours and level fives. For me, I'm going for level fives. But for most players, if you are leveling up your ships and you are modifying your ships, you basically want to be looking at your attack stat. I think the attack stat is probably the most valuable. Whether or not you get the 444 or 554 maxing of 555, ideally, you just want to get as high attack stat as possible. So if this was just my first roll, this particular one right here where I get 129 attack, would be very, very valuable. That's the one that I would do and not really worry about those extra modifications for most of your ships. Ideally, we're just looking at stats here. That's the big buff to these ships and then sort of take this at your own pace because remember, cola is very scarce nowadays. It's hard to come across and every time I click this modification button, it costs 50 cola. This is costing, every time I click this button, it costs 50 cola and how many bellies is that? Like what, 10 million belly? Like, it's very costly to do this and that's why I was saying at the start, if you're not an end game player, doing stuff like this can be very, very challenging to max out your ships. Now, a lot of people, you're going to just be wanting to do your uh, one ship cost every day and just trying to get rerolls and then just see how you go from there. But as you can see, with the modification button, there's a bar that is going up. It's called the pity bar. Basically, at level like one, like when you start doing this, the more times you do it, the higher this buff actually gets. And at the beginning, it's like one four star guaranteed. Then it goes to like two star, two four stars guaranteed. Then it goes to three four stars guaranteed. So that way, if you've spent a certain amount of coal, you can at least get the first buff for your particular ship. Now remember, it costs 20 super cola and 15,000 just to get to this point, which is a lot. It's a lot. Now, I'm going to put out a guide for stuff like farming belly, farming stuff like uh, cotton candy and like Rayleigh points because. The Rayleigh's Bazaar is the best place to get cola. And as of me recording this right now, I have been trying to get 555 for over two hours. I, I've been doing stuff with my morning and I've just been hitting this button, trying to get 555 on my goddamn ship. Now, for the um, the birds, like their mods aren't great. The one turn of cooldown just makes things faster. Uh, the damage reduction is literally whatever. And for a ship like this, I would just prioritize your attack stat. Maybe um, the HP stat because... Uh, Rush is now very, very valuable. Obviously, if the ship has better buffs, like the um, the dinghy with... Not the dinghy, the uh, thousand... Is it, no, the, the going merry that has like despair and uh, bind removal with attack down. This is going to make content a lot smoother for stuff like auto teams and for like getting around uh, gimmicks. But at the moment, I think most players should focus on the attack stat. That should be the one to go for. And then look at HP. Now, as you can see, once you get to the point where I'm at and you've spent... 50,000 cola and a crap ton of belly and a bunch of time, you get to the point where it gives you a guaranteed two four stars and one five star. Once you click this button, you're going to see the super success and we're going to pray for the love of God that we get... Don't get it. Don't get it! We don't get it. So we needed 121 in attack and at least 121 in recovery. It's not as good as what I already have, so we're basically just going to keep clicking the modify button. The upside to this is you don't have to select something to overwrite what you already have. So that's always nice. But like I said, for most ships, getting them the 444 and just doing your one every single day to just try and get a better roll is going to be nice. Now, do I like this system? No, I, I, I really don't. But like I said, this is a luxury system. This is just this is just something nice for end game players. And if you are new, mid game player don't worry about this too much i wouldn't recommend leveling any ship up just so you can do this every single day if you want to though i wouldn't hold it against you however the ships that are definitely worth it in my opinion for newer players stuff like the um the thousand sunny for the one turn of attack down removal as well as the one turn of bind removal passively is nice that one turn of attack down i think is a four star mod so that's very very good and if you are looking at choosing a ship Looking at the guaranteed 4-star mod would be the one that I would go for. Because the getting a 444 is way easier than getting 555. It's actually guaranteed, and you don't have to spend that much cola to actually get to this particular point. Now, doing something like I'm doing right now, definitely not recommended. I would take this at your own pace, 
Um, if you have a bunch of rally points like I have, I've just been spamming them on Collard. Trying to get this done for this goddamn video, as well as the fact that I have the birds maxed out. Um, but for most players, I, I would not recommend doing this. I, I wouldn't recommend trying to farm out your 555 unless you need it or the content requires it. So if you're looking at doing a ship, maybe doing something like the Thousand Sunny would be great. The Moby Dick's okay. I don't mind the Moby Dick. The Blackbird ship's great, obviously, with the New Year's batch. Oh, sorry, the Anniversary batch makes them very, very good. And then the Magello um, giving the one-turn healing effect converting to damage does seem incredibly interesting as well. So there's also that buff about it that could increase your damage. But like I said, even if you are an in-game player, we saw one trillion damage with the latest super boss. So doing stuff like this, it's not really giving you all that much. It's just making your day-to-day -day grind a lot simpler and a lot easier because you're going to have more attack. Uh, you're going to have more uh, HP. You're going to have more recovery. And doing stuff like auto farming or beating stuff like PK at level 150 every single day, if you are doing that to farm out your turtles and getting collar and stuff like that along the way, is going to be very, very nice. Now, I do understand this takes a lot of resources. No, we don't want to click that. I do want to say this takes a lot of resources, but they have given us game modes where we can farm this out. Now, do the game modes give enough? No, I definitely don't think they do. But a lot of people are complaining that there's nothing to do all the time when you get three PKA fights every single day. You should be doing staying on top of them, trying to get as much um, Hime Turtles or regular Turtles as possible and get your hands on as much Cholera as you possibly can if you don't have Rayleigh points to burn like I do. However, I don't think they are giving us enough. There, there needs to be an island kind of like GPU and those other Fortnite islands that drop stuff like cola will give stuff like belly because this is taking a lot of belly by the way my belly stocks are diminishing quite drastically and I do think farming out stuff like GPU Hime Turtles selling Hime Turtles selling um the GPU character or whatever character you're farming for uh Hime Turtles at the time is going to be the best way to not only build up stuff like your resources for turtles to level up your characters but also sell those characters for Rayleigh points to then spend on Cola. Again, do you do your PK every single day, farm the game mode out there and get that done. Uh, but you are going to need a lot of resources if you do this. So focus on stuff like getting your characters up if they're level like 110, level 20. That's going to give you more stats for your team. Focus on stuff like supports before you start looking at these crazy ship modifications that can give you utility and stuff. And then you can move over to your ships once you have sort of built up enough resources in the game. But that's going to wrap up the video. I'm going to leave you with this last modification. Let's, let's, let's pray together. Come on, let's get it. Super success. Let's go. I hate it here. So, like I said, I would highly recommend just focusing on getting your attacks that nice and high. And then looking to get your modifications later down the line. Because, like, this is just taking so much. Like, it's, it's taking so many resources. It is nice to see, but just remember that it is a luxury. But that's going to wrap up the video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to go down there and belt the like button for me. Hit the subscribe button. Do all that good stuff. Most importantly, though, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye. Fucking ships, man.